All right, this is John with uh, John's Tropical Garden, and uh, it's been a few weeks since I made a video for you guys. Uh, this is going to be kind of uh, an update, uh, not so much an update, but I'm going to talk to you guys about a super important issue, and that is uh, pest control. Either uh, pest control on your potted plants or your plants that you have in your garden. So here are some of my seashore mangosteen little plants that I planted about a month ago. And they have been doing pretty good. And first they weren't doing pretty good because of some of the uh, pests that are coming uh, inside of my home now since it's uh, starting to get winter time here. In zone 7, so of course they're going to look for a warmer place to hide out in. And this is a couple of Achachiru or Achacha Garcinia humilis seeds that I planted in here. See this one's got some nice dark green leaves. And this one is not doing quite as good, it's just catching up to the other one. You can see, and I'm actually about to uh, take these out of here and move them into their own uh, separate little pots. Their uh, tap roots starting to come out of the bottom. Right there, as you can see. Now, first off, uh, one of the major uh, pests that indoors especially you're going to be having the most trouble with, it's, uh, it's actually fungus gnats. Now, fungus gnats... Uh, they are not fruit flies. I'm not even sure if they're related to uh, regular uh, house flies or blue bottle flies. I'm not sure. But they are incredibly invasive and uh, dangerous to your potted and uh, garden plants. Because what they do is, like something like Garcinia plants here, you see I've had to protect these, putting that plastic over it. And not exposing the soil because of what they do if the soil is moist, even if it's not that moist, the fungus gnats will actually get in the soil. They'll lay their eggs and their larvae will feed either on the roots of the plant that's already established or the uh, soft seed that you plant in there. Because of course Garcinia plants, uh, you start off with a really soft seed, you know, uh, since they're uh, succulent plants and they're not they're not exactly seeds, since uh, mangosteens they don't uh, sexually reproduce or uh, any other Garcinia plants they don't uh, reproduce through a uh, sexual reproduction because they are uh, hermaphrodites. Actually, uh, I know that sounds kind of weird, a plant being a hermaphrodite, but uh, that is what I heard. But one thing you can do uh, besides just covering up with plastic, uh, actually just doing this, it's going to be pretty ineffective against the fungus gnats because, you know, you got to have a little hole right in there, get a little oxygen in so the, uh, you know, the stem can breathe and everything properly. Get some more oxygen to the uh, upper roots. But there are several things you could do. Now, one pest control method probably the most common is going to be using neem oil and neem oil it's a tree it's oil from a tree that actually grows in asia i think southern asia india maybe southeast asia and i know when like a huge uh, huge amounts of locusts uh, come and decimate crops in Southeast Asia and India that one of the only plants that uh, locusts and other insects do not bother is the neem tree specifically because of the oil and it's really irritating uh, to the insects and actually if they consume the oil or something that has oil on it uh, it's actually going to end up killing them that is why and uh I found out depending on what you're growing, I uh, know my it's a little bit harsh on my cherimoya trees. Uh, using this as a root soak um, kind of did a little bit of burn, uh, possibly to the leaves. But uh, make sure you definitely follow the directions. You know, don't make it too um, concentrated. Definitely don't use more than a tablespoon, or actually two tablespoons, of neem oil along with uh, two tablespoons of the uh, Dr. Broner South Suds. It's a uh, completely uh, safe uh, biodegradable soap 
that you want to mix with the neem oil and what it does it actually um, I think if you just put the neem oil in the water and you're gonna have to constantly shake it up you know just to keep it uh, dispersed in the water while you're spraying it or soaking it in soil and this actually helps with that it uh, I think it helps it mix better in the water and you could actually do that once a week and if you already have some uh, larva in your soil and you add the neem oil and the south suds it is actually going to uh, kill them not right away because it's they're both organic uh, they're not uh, chemical based so they're not going to create a dead zone what it's called uh, around your plants that kills any insects it only kills the uh, harmful insects whether it be caterpillars that are going to try to eat on the leaves of your uh, potted plants or uh, aphids or uh, the uh, fungus gnats as well as soon as they try to consume any of the soil or any fungus in the soil or any part of the plants this is going to take effect on them it's actually going to uh, slow down their uh, digestive system and they're not actually going to be able to feed anymore and it ends up killing them that way and other ways to make sure your plants are healthy and you know less susceptible to a uh, pest is by adding this every time you uh, put a plant in a pot or anytime you plant uh, something in the ground whether it be trees or garden vegetables you definitely want to use the uh, mycorrhizal fungi the beneficial fungi and what this does it creates a, a huge amounts of uh, nutrient uptake compared to what your plant can get on its own without this beneficial fungi I think it could increase their uh, nutrient uptake all the way up to 700% I believe actually yeah I'm pretty sure it says that on here if not on here I know I've read it uh, on a couple websites I've heard of actually trees larger trees that uh, have been treated with this uh, mycorrhizal fungi they can actually uh, take in nutrients from hundreds of yards even like up to like a quarter mile away so yeah this is definitely completely essential to use with any potting plants uh, if you have a you're starting off on a really small pot like that you're just going to want to use about uh, like a quarter of a teaspoon I'd say and if you're starting off with like a gallon pot uh, for a larger plant or transplanting a smaller plant to a gallon pot uh, you're gonna want to use about a tablespoon to two tablespoons of this and not only the beneficial fungi what else is completely essential is the azomite rock dust I have spoke about before and it adds tons of minerals uh, it's gonna help your plants uh, fight off disease fight off uh, fungi and bacteria uh, before you even have to use any of the treatment methods that I talked about but uh, besides the neem oil and the south suds another product you can use which is even more effective for um, soil dwelling uh, harmful insects is this okay I just got this stuff you see it says it kills repels fungus gnats root aphids thrips shore flies and white flies so if you use this as a foliar spray or as a root soak it is going to uh, either kill or um, repel any of those insects that that are listed on here and what this is it is actually I know a clove oil rosemary oil and purified water a couple other ingredients lark acid but this is uh, certified for organic farming so it is uh, completely safe for your plants and for uh, earthworms and other uh, beneficial uh, nematodes and other insects that uh, do not harm your plants so definitely but this you're gonna want to use a little bit more per gallon of water um, as I said with the neem oil you're going to want to use one to two tablespoons per gallon with the south suds but with this you're going to want to use four to uh, eight and possibly it says even 12 uh, tablespoons per gallon and the reason for that is is because you can see 
the active ingredients, it is not pure. They're a little less concentrated, the clove oil and rosemary oil. And those are the two things that are going to kill the harmful insects. And you can see they're not, uh, it's not pure in here. It has other stuff in it. It's just 2% and 1.5% uh, rosemary oil. So as I said, use 4 to uh, 12 tablespoons of this per gallon of water. And you're going to want to use that about once a week, uh, especially in the spring, summer, and beginning of fall if you live in a warmer environments than here. Or even if you live all the way up to zone 7A where I'm at. So definitely this is going to help keep your plants healthy, keep harmful insects away. You know, and uh, in turn, it's going to keep uh, those disease spreading insects away because many of these insects on here, they're going to spread plant viruses, uh, fungi, you know, bad fungi that's going to harm your plants. So whether it's blights or black spots or powdery mildew. So definitely either whatever you choose, whether you choose this, the SMS 203 or the neem oil and the south suds either one is going to work pretty good for you so uh, like i said you know to keep your plant healthy in the first place definitely use the asmite rock dust uh, and for a garden you're going to want to use about one pound uh, per square foot i think that's a little too much that's usually the recommendation for uh, rock dust as my rock dust and uh, actually what I also recommend you using even more than the azimite rock dust because it is glacial it is not uh, volcanic you're gonna want to use some volcanic sand and some uh, volcanic uh, basalt rock dust and uh, it has a little bit different minerals in it. I know most of the same as the azimites but I heard it is even uh, better for potted plants and you could actually mix the volcanic rock dust with the azomites just so you make sure you're getting uh, every single uh, uh, every single uh, element that you can possibly get in there to improve the immune system and uh, improve the uh, fruit yields, the flowering yield, whatever it is you're growing, it's definitely going to be helpful for that uh, along with the mycorrhizal fungi. So I hope I've been, uh, it's, this video has been pretty informative. I hope I uh, taught you guys a few other things, or uh, a few things you didn't know about uh, pest control, whether it be soil dwelling insects or flying insects or caterpillars that are going to attack and chew on the leaves of your plants. And if you are growing in a garden, definitely something else you want to use i actually bought some of these these yellow yellow papers right here actually you can see there's already a fly stuck to it yeah and that is another one of the fungus gnats yeah that's what they look like right there they kind of look like almost uh, little mosquitoes they really don't look anything like fruit flies, uh, just so you know. If you see those little flies that look like that flying around, definitely uh, take action. Don't wait. Uh, because if you see them, they've already started laying eggs in your soil. And I've already treated this soil with the neem oil and the south suds. But you can see, I just pulled another one out. There's still a couple more. And you know, I've actually never seen these fungus gnats here before. I had to do some research about them to see what they were. I actually think they could possibly be an invasive species here. Uh, that, you know, that I may have actually possibly introduced into my home and now my backyard from ordering uh, some exotic uh, and tropical fruits online. And not just online, but getting them at, say, a local gourmet market that has a lot of uh, different exotic things like uh, passion fruit, mangosteens, cherimoya. You know, I could have possibly brought some of those flies in myself uh, to my home just by buying some of those fruits. So whenever you're at a store, definitely, um, you know, you're buying exotic fruits, take a look at them, make sure, definitely make sure they don't have any fruit flies on them don't have any little gnats on them anything like that but these yellow sheets they're specifically designed to catch these flies because they're actually attracted to this color 
and you can see I'm trying to protect my, my passion fruit right there this is a uh, Passiflora maliformis fruit or also known as a uh, sweet calabash passion fruit and they're supposed to be super delicious and it's getting kind of cool here so I'm kind of concerned this might not be getting enough sun Might not be getting enough sun, but hopefully that'll ripen up for me soon. But anyways, you could buy these little yellow sheets online. They're actually called uh, aphid uh, gnat uh, fly sheets, and they're really great for gardening. Whether it's uh, protecting your pot of plants like I have right here, or protecting your garden vegetables. Got a bunch of tomatoes that are ripening up over there. Anyways, I uh, hope I taught you guys a few things on this video, so definitely look up some of those items if you're having some uh, problems with insects. Uh, no matter what they are, uh, any of these products are going to be pretty helpful to you. And uh, so yeah, just definitely uh, hit that like button if you can, or subscribe if you haven't already. So uh, thank you guys for watching, and just uh, I will see you guys next time. Thanks.